Hi, how are you doing? I'm Sophia, and this is the third part of the Docker MTA series, Modernizing Java Apps for IT Pros. In part two, I showed you how to build a Java EE7 app from source and then deploy it on a Wildfly container. And you can use the exact same approach for any Java app and run them in the container. So one of the big advantages of containers is that it can ease the process of updating older applications by replacing parts of the application as needed. And in this video, I'll update the MoviePlex 7 application by adding more attributes to the movie entity. And I'm also going to update the presentation layer by writing a new client using JavaScript with a React framework. As we saw earlier, the Java server face client was rather sparse. I want to make a movie listing to include movie posters as well as more information about each movie. And to do that, I'll add a few more attributes to the movie entity and include a path to a movie poster and more information about the cast as well as the movie rating. I'll also update the code for reading and writing JSON responses so that the movie entity is properly encoded. I wanted to update the presentation layer with a different client technology. Fortunately, the MoviePlex 7 application also includes a REST interface for querying movie data. This simplifies writing a new client because I can use the API and get the data via REST. I won't go into depth about the JavaScript client other than it's a basic application that requests data from the MoviePlex 7 API and displays it in the browser. As you can see, the JavaScript is a bit more colorful than the original Java Server Faces client. I want to deploy the JavaScript independent of the MoviePlex 7 app. I'll do this by building an app in a node container using a Docker file. I previously compiled and deployed the MoviePlex 7 application from source by building it in a Maven container, then deploying it in a Wildfly container. However, let's make a change. We'll use Tomcat EE as the target application server, and I'll change the container used for deployment to Tomcat EE from Wildfly within the Docker file by just changing one line. With the addition of the React client, we now have two Docker files, one to build the Java MovieFlex application and another to build the React JavaScript client. Running a build for each will result in two images. We can individually start and run each image with appropriate flags, but a simpler and more consistent solution is to use a Docker Compose file, which can start both images as containers that are connected by a network defined in Docker. And another nice thing about Docker Compose is that you can also use it to build images without having to do separate Docker build commands for each image. So to run and build the images, you use docker-compose up build. Once it's built, we can check on the status of the containers using docker ps-a. This shows that the containers are running. Since there's overhead to start and deploy the war file, I can look at the log files of the MovieFlex 7 container to check to see if it started. You do this by saying docker logs and the container name or ID. Now that the application server started, I can open the React client and try out the new interface. At the start of this video, I had my app running in a Docker container. Now I've updated the main application and written a new JavaScript client to replace the Java server faces client. I've also migrated the application from Wildfly server to a Tomcat EE server. I use Docker files to automate the build and deployment of both the app and the JavaScript client. And I've separated the presentation layer from the application and loosely coupled it using the existing REST API. This makes the entire application easier to maintain and deploy. As you can see, moving any traditional app to Docker will facilitate running it in the cloud. In the next video, I'll look at it deploying it and managing the build process. That's what's coming up in part four of Modernizing Java Apps for IT Pros.